This video covers everything you need to know about the Brinson Fackler model when you're doing performance attribution on a portfolio. So the Brinson Fackler model is probably the most popular performance attribution model that's used in the investment management industry. There's a number of others that have been developed, um, more sophisticated models, I'd say. But this one's a pretty core model that's still in use today. Uh, it came about in 1985, and it's been going strong ever since. So really what we want to do is break down why did a perf portfolio perform a certain way? Why did, why did we outperform or underperform during a certain month? Was it because of sector allocation? Was it because of stock selection? Was it because of something else called the interaction effect? So I'm going to walk you through an example here. I've got a portfolio that only has that only allocates to three different sectors: consumers, financials, and technology. These are my portfolio weights. You will see that they sum to 100%. The benchmark also invests in those three sectors and only those three sectors, and the weights sum to 100%. My portfolio return I can get by multiplying the sector return. Well, my returns in this sector: 5% times 25%. Plus minus seven times 33 percent plus 11 percent times 42 percent. So it's just the weights times the returns summed. I get 3.6 percent. The benchmark I would do the same. I would take the benchmark weights, multiply those by the benchmark returns, sum those up. I get 1.8 percent. So you can see in this case, you know, we've outperformed. We've outperformed by 1.8 percent. So the excess return, that's the most important thing with portfolio attribution as well. First understand, did you outperform or underperform? And in this case, we've got good news. We've outperformed this month by 1.8 percent. So the question is, why? Why have we done that? So let's take a look at the allocation effect. The allocation effect can be described uh, with this simple equation. We basically want to know, did we overweight or underweight a, underweight a sector? So WP minus WI, that's like 25% minus 19%. So we overweighted consumers, consumer stocks in this example. So this would be 6%. And then we will want to take a look at what did the benchmark return in consumers do? It was 3%. And what was the overall benchmark return? 1.8. So we're comparing these sector returns to the overall benchmark return. And that's why there's no subscript down here. It's BI minus B. So in this case, let's just take a look at consumers, and then we'll go through all the other ones. But we've overweighted consumers by 6%. And consumer stocks were up 3, as defined by the benchmark, versus the overall benchmark return, which was 1.8. So we overweighted a sector where the returns were good, where they were better than the benchmark. So you can pretty much guess that our allocation effect to consumers has got to be positive. And you see that right here. 25 minus 19%, that's 6%, times this difference, which is 1.2. You multiply those two together, you get about seven basis points of excess return. So a good decision to allocate more capital to consumer stocks that, that month. Financials, you can see in this case, we underweighted it. So we were up 33 versus 44. So we actually had an 11% underweight to financials. And good thing, because financials were down 4%. And the market was up 1.8. So financials, you know, minus 4, minus 1.8, multiplied by minus 11%, you get 63 basis points of excess return. So very important to underweight financials in this particular month. Technology, let's take a look. We were overweight technology by 5%. Technology stocks were up 8. Great month for tech stocks. The total return for the market was up 1.8%. So good decision to overweight technology. And you can see that bears out here, 31 basis points. And so if I sum all this up, you can see that our allocation effect added 101 basis points to portfolio excess return during the month. This is portfolio excess return. And this compares very um, nicely. We, we have had 1.8 overall, so we haven't figured out where the other 70 or so basis points came from. Um, but this is a good start uh, in our in our allocation effect. Now, the one thing you notice I don't use at all here are our own specific portfolio returns for which encompasses our own stock selection. I've taken this out of the equation. I just want to know did we overweight or underweight a sector, and how did that sector do relative to the market? So for the selection effect, that's where we're going to bring in our portfolio returns. So once again, we outperformed by 1.8%. The selection effect is going to be taking the benchmark weight. So now I'm going to take away our decision on allocation. I'm just going to say, well, what if we assume we allocated the same as the benchmark, 19, 44, and 37? So we're going to use those weights. 
And then we're going to take a look at our returns versus the benchmark sector returns. So our sector returns relative to the benchmark sector returns. So in this case, for consumers, it's going to be 19% times this difference here, which is 2%, right? looks like a positive number right we had good stock selection here you can see right away we had bad stock selection in financials our stocks did much worse than the market and technology we had good selection here uh, we we outperformed by three percent um, within that sector so let's take a look consumers I multiply 19 percent times that two percent that gives me 38 basis points of excess return financials you can see this is just uh, a disaster here, uh, relatively speaking. We were we allocated 44 because that's the benchmark weight. So we, we go with the benchmark allocation. The um, but unfortunately this we had really bad security selection here. So and that cost us 132 basis points. And then the last thing is technology. In technology, we take the benchmark weight of 37%. We multiply it by our excess return of 3%. And that adds 111 basis points. So that was really important to have good stock selection within technology. If I add all this up, it's still a positive number, so 17 basis points. And you would say that your analysts in the consumer and the technology sector did much better than your analysts did in the financials who picked some pretty bad stocks for that particular month. OK, so the last thing is what we call the interaction effect. And the, the intuition behind the interaction effect is, did we have good stock selection in the sectors that we overweighted? And did we have bad stock selection in the sectors that we underweighted? So for example, in this sector, we had good we had an, we had a we well first of all, we had good stock selection in consumers, right? We had good stock selection. And we overweighted that so we were smart enough to over allocate to the sectors where we had good stock selection here we had bad stock selection right we minus seven minus minus four bad stock selection in financials and hey we were so smart that we under allocated an area where we had bad stock selection so that's going to be a positive number too and here is uh, we had good stock selection here and we overweighted here so this is going to be all three of these are going to give us positive numbers so let's take a look at this the way we do this is we take a look at how much we allocated relative to the benchmark. So we, we compare these two, okay? Uh, and now we take a look at this return versus this return. So so we're co comparing these two, comparing these two, and we're comparing these two. So it's, we, take, we, we take the weight of the portfolio minus the weight of the index times the return of the portfolio sector minus the return of the benchmark sector. So for consumers, you can see that we get 12 basis points. We were smart enough to over allocate to a place where we had good stock selection. For financials, we had a big underweight to an area where we had really bad stock selection. So that was a smart call. And and here we had a really good stock selection, up 3%, and we were we took a marginally overweight position, so 15 basis points. So you can see here in financials, Financials, we had 3% excess return, and in technology, we had 3% excess return. But in financials, we took a bigger position. We took a bigger underweight. And so our interaction effect with financials is bigger than our interaction effect is with technology. And so you add all those three up, and you get 60 basis points. And so let's put all this together. Let's, let's summarize this. So again, we've got our table up here. If we summarize this, I remember our allocation effect, we got 7 from consumers, we got 63 from financials, 31 from technology. Selection effect was two positives and one negative. And the interac interaction effect, interaction effect is over here. Okay, so if I sum all that up over here to the right, it does sum up, if you use rounding, to 180 basis points, 178 to be precise, 178 basis points. And then also, so, so you can do it this way so we were better allocators than we were stock selectors and we had some good interaction effect on that as well uh, you can also do it this way you can say well you know we're not very good maybe you say we're not very good in financials you know we yeah we make good allocation and inter interaction decisions but our security selection is so bad that maybe we should not do financials anymore I don't know I think clearly one month is way too much to make any uh, general statements about what you should or shouldn't be doing going forward but it's nice to know where your returns came from, and the Brinson Fackler model helps you figure that out. So I uh, hope this gives you a nice summary. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also feel free to subscribe to this channel because I put out 
videos on a regular basis to help students. This uh, video um, YouTube channel is all about making finance fun for students. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.